Okay, can you all see the agenda? It's really brief. Uh, so again, we did our welcome. Um, we do have Kayla Bodie with us today. Oh, let me slow down, I'm sorry. If you all could turn on your camera so we can get familiar with your faces, um, we really would appreciate it. Um, we do have Kayla Bodie here from the background check unit and I wanted to give her an opportunity uh, to speak with y'all to see if there were any updates concerning background checks. So go ahead, Kayla. So we do have uh, one update that we're really excited about. January 25th, we will be having a background check training that is going to be strictly for child welfare providers. Um, so it's going to be geared specifically for you all and your regulations. It will not include um, information that pertains to child care just to kind of make it a simpler experience. So if you um, have any new staff or any staff that are taking over background checks or you just want a refresher, I'm gonna put the link to the training with the dates in the chat box. We are gonna be holding these quarterly. So um, you'll have multiple opportunities. And then I'm also gonna place the link for our website where you can find them. They will be recorded and placed on our website so you can go back and watch them later. Um, the first one will be on Wednesday, January 25th, and they will start at 12. So if you're not able to join us live, uh, please watch the recordings, but we are hoping to really have a, a smaller group, an intimate group, so that if you have questions or you have specific things that you want to ask, you can do that. And I will be doing the training and then Brenda Burr, our program coordinator, will also be on the call. Um, so we will be able to answer questions that you have. That's really the only update. There has been no other changes to policies, procedures, or regulations for background checks currently. Um, that could always change. We know, you know, right now during legislation session, things could change, but currently there are no changes. Um, and I will make sure and put my information in the chat box. So if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Okay, I do have a question, Kayla, and this is for Cynthia. I know there have been some uh, changes in that area. Is she still the contact person for our providers? Yes, so uh, Cynthia Smith is, um, she has gone back to working mostly with just child welfare providers. So if you have a question about a status or um, if you've submitted a check and you're not sure, you know, if you need to run the FBI or the state, any questions that you have as a child welfare provider, you can reach out to Cindy um, and I'll make sure Cindy will put her information in the chat box as well. So if you don't have her phone number or her email, you can feel free to reach out. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so we'll go ahead and keep moving. Um, I did wanna take a, a, just a little bit of your time to discuss uh, severe weather, the frozen pipes or flooding that may occur at your agencies or in your foster homes. Um, and we just need to know, like, are you prepared for if that should occur? Um, because it can happen at any time. You know, this is Arkansas weather. So um, it gets really cold, really fast sometimes. Um, and the, the weather just changes. So um, if you guys can kind of like give me some feedback of, do you think your um, your drills that you are running with your, your youth and your staff, are they pretty effective? Do you think everyone has a good understanding of those weather-related drills? If, if something should happen with your pipes, because we've seen it recently, um, pipes burst at an agency, um, and so they had to do a lot of moving, moving around of youth, um, and, and it was really um, a, a, a large task for them to take on. So have you guys thought about that? And, you know, is there a backup plan for you all? Um, and so if anybody can just kind of give me some feedback on, do you think you're prepared for weather related issues uh, that could um, cause concern for your buildings or grounds? Uh, this is Helena at Perimeter Forest City. Um, we do run our severe weather, um, our severe war. Sorry, it's Thursday. <laughs> severe weather protocols. We run them um, every month. 
Um, and so when we recently had like the tornadoes um, that came in like November, we did a drill the day before getting our residents prepared, prepared as well as our staff so they can know exactly where they should be going, um, as well as for um, severe weather, intimate weather, we do prepare our buildings and grounds ahead of the times and we do have things in place, uh, emergency readiness prep um, in place um, in case of inclement weather. Okay. Thank you, Helena. I appreciate that. Um, Hi, this is Ernesta from Piney Ridge. We have a very in-depth emergency operation plan and we too do severe weather drills. In addition, for leadership, when we see that whether it's cold weather, whether it's snow, whether it's ice, whether, you know, other things like that, we as a leadership get together and meet and have an emergency, I guess, operation plan meeting and talk about the different areas and what could go wrong and how we would handle it. And also, if something comes up on the weekend, we are talking to each other either in person or by cell phone. So um, it's a uh, we plan as well as one can plan with the way life can get you. That's right. Um, so that's a really good idea to kind of think ahead, especially with your um, your operations manager. I, I'm not sure if that would be the person, um, but the person who kind of takes care of the buildings and grounds and just kind of talk through uh, whether or not they have a good plan if the pipes burst or, um, you know, if that tornado does come through, like, you know, where do we send the kids or, you know, um, so that that's a really good uh, plan that you guys are doing, uh, Renissa and Helena. So thank you for sharing. Hey, Ebony, um, this is Justin at Piney Ridge with Renissa. One of the other things that we did, because in the, in the last cold weather, we did have some pipes burst. One of the other things we do is we call our vendors um who who you know are our sprinkler vendors our plumbing vendors and we just kind of let them know ahead of time um you know the importance of our business and what we do so an example is uh during this last freeze we did have some pipes freeze and burst at our qrtp and uh that was on a friday night um and our director of plant operations and the vendor responded to that situation with about three within about three hours um, and we're able to get that repaired and fixed um so in, in that window you know we were able to go on fire watch because the sprinkler system was down um, but because we communicated uh, effectively with our vendors they understand the importance and they're kind of on call for us if you would right that's another good idea so thank you for sharing that justin sure. uh, because we do have some areas where like they're really far out um and they just can't get um, vendors out there as fast as, as they should be. So that's a good idea for you guys to kind of plan ahead and speak to your uh, to those types of vendors and kind of just like, hey, talk them through this and like, you know, what if we have this happen um, with the equipment at our agency? What should we do? Or, you know, what can you do for us? So uh, that's really good. So thank you for sharing that, Justin. Anybody else? Okay, well, I wanted to just speak about that just so you guys can kind of keep it in the back of your mind. Like you we really need to be prepared on top of those things when it comes to buildings and grounds. So hopefully the weather will become more spring-like really soon, uh, but you just never know. So um, now I wanted to take the time to identify any um, provider challenges that you all are seeing or if there's a reoccurrence of something that um, is happening at your agencies or in the foster homes um, and to see if anyone else may have a solution for you. Um, or, you know, if, if it's something that the licensing unit can help you with, we are more than willing to do so. Um, again, I just like to throw out there that like, if you think that your agency needs any training with, um, uh, intent training on specific areas of the minimum licensing standards, we can do that for you. All we need for you guys to is to just let us know, you know, and we'll try to work out a plan for you all. So um, have there been any issues? I don't think 
I've seen a, a bunch of reports on elopement, so knock on some wood. Um, but I, I don't know if the youth are pretty calm right now at the agencies, and I, I'm not sure how things are going with your youth. Is 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 that a good thing or? This is June with CET. <clears throat> I was on vacation, but when I got back, I was told that there were no um, serious issues. There was one incident where one of our youth decided to um, take a visit to a former foster parent that she used to live with. Um, other than that, that's the only thing that came up. But I do have a memo that I wanted to uh, share with you. Uh, dated the 30th of December of this year, to uh, ILPs um, that effective January 1, the Behavioral Health Independent Licensed Practitioner Certification Manual will sunset. And do you know anything about that, Ebony? They said that the uh, ILPs will no longer be required certification. So I wanted to know how does that affect us? I have not been made aware of that. And if you're if you're willing to share that with me, I can kind of take a look over it and see if I can find you some information, but I, I, I never received that information. So, so they're saying the IOPs do not need the certified teachers or what, what is it saying? Um, I'll read it. It says effective January 1, 2023, the Behavioral Health Independently Licensed Practitioner Certification Manual will sunset. The Department of Human Services Division of Aging, Adult, and Behavior Health Services Independently Licensed Practitioners will no longer require certification or recertification from the Division of Provider Services and Quality Assurance. So I talked to someone from DIPSQA and said, well, how, what does that mean? How does it affect us? Uh, what? why did this happen? She says, I don't know. I said, who made this decision? I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, said, I said, okay. I said, well, I'm going to be on a provider call uh, this morning. I said, I'll check with someone there and see if they are aware of it. But she said it was sent to the ILPs. And she says, we don't know what to do because we have uh, over 600 applications out there for recertification. So... Okay. So th that's another part of one of my goals for this year is to kind of work more um, in tune with our other divisions. So that's a that's a good reason for me to reach out to them. So Okay. Um, there, there is a number on here. She said, it says, um, you have any questions regarding, no, it just says if you have any questions regarding Medicaid billing. So anyway, that's I just thought, I said, okay, I will read this letter and see if anyone on the call knows anything about it. Well, I'm not sure about anybody else on the call, but I have not. Um, and, and if you could just forward that to me, let me review it and see who I can find and uh, agent and adult and kind of go from there. Okay. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, any other uh, provider challenges? Um, with the youth at your facilities, or are you guys finding that your staff is staying longer? Is is that working out? Or I don't know what the turnover rate is looking like out there. Our staff is stable, but foster parents, we're having the hardest time getting people that want to foster. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not sure if I have any adoption agencies out there on the call. Um, so, but if you're also having any issues, like feel free to let me know and we can do a follow-up on that as well. Um, so uh, Ms. June, I'm not sure about recruitment and how you guys kind of work through that, but now may be the time to kind of like pull at some heartstrings in the community and see if you can um, uh, get your number of foster homes up. Uh, because we really do need people out there to take care of those youth that are in foster care. So good luck to you. <laughs> okay.
Well, if there are no other provider challenges, uh, I did just want to, it's one brief update with the PRLU website. So it is updated. Um, and in an email, after we get off this call, I will put the link to where you can you just see um, the list of uh, licensed provider, uh, provider agencies for uh, PRLU. Um, also on there, it indicates whether your agency is in good standing. If it's in good standing, not in good standing, if you have a corrective action agreement or anything different, any adverse action. So just keep that in mind that that information is updated to um, reflect that information. Um, once agencies, if they are on a corrective action or if they uh, satisfy any um, requirements from the board, we do update that website as well at that time. Uh, but I just wanted you guys to be aware of that. So if you're getting a, if you receive a corrective action agreement, it will be posted on the website. So just FYI. Ebony, did you see that um, chat from Paula Riggs? Paul Riggs, rather. Uh, I, I did not. And if somebody from uh, licensing can kind of help me out there, I'm sorry. Let me see. It was from Paul. Well, oh, it says Paul, but it, I, I think that should be Paula. I don't I know. There's I know there's a Paula Riggs at, at watch. She said, so, I don't have a speaker. You got it, Kayla? Yeah, I'll, I'll read it to you. Um, Ebony, I'm not sure. It says I don't have a speaker and I joined late, but I have a question. How do you request an international driver's license DMV check? Internet, international driver's license DMV check. I, I would not be sure, but I can I guess I could check on it. I, I guess check with your local local um department of revenue. Is it the revenue department? Motor vehicle department. Yeah, it should be the DMV. DMV, um, uh-huh. Give them a call and see if they can kind of get you going in the right direction. Um Kayla, since can you type that in there if she can't hear? Yes, I can respond to her and just I'll I'll see if I can find a link to send her to because. OK, I appreciate it. OK, so moving forward, so. Um, I did want to make sure that we ended the call on a good note again, this is just a short meeting uh, just to kind of welcome you guys back and happy new year. Um, I wanted to kind of get a project going for the youth. Um, and it's open to any youth that would like to participate. It's, it's nothing mandatory that they need to do. Um, but youth can, they can mail me a one page letter, a poem or a summary with the drawing um, and include the information uh, that will be good for me to know. So um, I like to know like, what is the best part of them? when they visualize themselves as adults, what would they like to be? Where would they like to live as adults? If they could start a business, what type of business would it be? And then who has inspired them and how? And this is just a way to kind of get the youth to kind of think positively on the outcome of whatever situation that they're in, um, and my plan is to kind of make sure that I, I respond to each one that I receive and send them back uh, some type of certificate of job well done or just some encouraging words. Um, and this is just a little simple project that I, I like for your youth to participate in. Um, and I'll include the information as for where they can email the, uh, the information to. Um, and then the deadline will be January the 26th. And again, only if they want to participate. So we, I just wanted to see how this project would go. But other than that, um, if any of you all have anything positive to share, please feel free to go ahead and let us know like what's happening at your agency, um, what, um, what, you know, what good things have occurred and you like to kind of blast out out there or you've had a, a certain staff that has done really well with your youth or your HR department is streamlined and they have everything together or your education department is 
really prepared for this this second semester of school. So if you have anything that positive positive that you'd like to share, please feel free to do so. I just, I'm sorry, I just had a question in chat. I don't mean to change the subject, but maybe afterwards if somebody could just answer it. Okay, let me see. Okay, does it say I'm working if, I'm wondering if IT is still working on the licensing dashboard so we can see our 521. That's a good question, Renissa. Um, I will ask them, I'm not sure if Matt is on the call. Um, he's our IT manager that we work with, but I will definitely check with him um, and give you a response back. So that's something that I can do pretty soon. Good question. This is Charlotte, uh, CEO up at Perimeter Forest City. I just want to uh, say that our education department is really working with our kids. We have uh, ACT prep coming in the building from January to the end of the school year to do ACT prep for our um, uh, senior, junior and senior high boys. So we're very excited about that. Our uh, management team has completed conscious discipline, and we are happy that conscious discipline will be coming on campus to us February, February the 13th and 14th, so that all the other staff can get the information about conscious discipline as well. So we're doing some good things here in Port City. Good, good. That's great to hear that you guys are like um, getting your older you prepared for college. So. Um, that's good that your ACT prep is coming. So I appreciate that. So good job, Charlie. Good job. Anybody else? Well, I have something to share, Ebony. Um, mm -hmm. There'll be a, quite a few people on this. So will get an invite, but we're going to be doing our groundbreaking ceremony for our new building on January 26th. That'll be in Springdale, um, Arkansas. So we hope to have a good crowd. Uh, I mean, a good crowd, but we're really excited for our for our new building. For those of you who don't know, um, we're doing a replacement facility, so we're completely, um, we'll be in a completely new building um, in about 18 months. So oh, we're okay. Really, we're, we're really excited about that. They started, they started working on it about six weeks ago. Cool, cool. I know they have been in talks for a really long time, so that's, it's good things are moving like they should with it. Oh, no, they're out there working on it. Like, there's contractors out there right now. Oh, okay. Good deal. Yeah. Good deal. We're excited for that. Good. All Thank right. you, Vanessa, for reminding me about that. <laughs> She's going to get a new office. <laughs> okay. Well, our next, um, the previously scheduled December 14th Child Welfare Agency Review Board meeting was um, was canceled and uh, rescheduled for Wednesday, January 25th of this year at 1.30 p.m., same, loca same location here at Central Office. So um, uh, we've sent out our notices already, so everyone should know who needs to appear before the board. Um, if you have any questions about the board meetings, uh, please feel free to send me an email or reach out to your licensing specialist, and we will uh, get a response to you as soon as we can. So with that, I really appreciate everyone for their time. And I'm sorry I took too much time from you, but again, happy new year and I wish you all well. So thank you for participating.